So you've gotten three comics out of how many back? 27. Whoa. Not including these? Yeah. Whoa. So i got 24 more books coming, and these are 20 more. So I have 44 books coming back. I'm going to have 44 of my own very comic books, some of them our own, um, out there in the world, and I can't do anything about it. Um, I can say this on CGC send off number four, I am sending off the most valuable book I've ever sent off Whoa, to CGC okay. in this pile right here. That's a big deal. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Big Chunky. He sucks and he forgot his microphone. So we're down to one microphone. <laughs> um, so this is the fourth, 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 uh, fourth CGC send off that this person has done right here. This guy. <clears throat> yeah. How many books did you say we were just talking about this? How many? How many do you have out in the ether? Twenty four are in CGC limbo. Okay. I have not received and you're them back. willingly sending how many more to 20, CGC Limbo? Twenty more. So I'm gonna have forty plus books caught up in FedEx slash oh. TGC. God, that's scary. <laughs> Worth over eight eight or so thousand dollars total between all forty uh, something. Probably maybe over ten. Anyway, we saw them. Before. That was the last CG send off. Uh, number three. Yeah, go there. watch all of those. They're all in separate playlists. You I've should only go received watch them all. back three of the 27 i sent them yeah which we need to talk about Anywho. in the future yes so you have a big old stack of books that here's why i'm doing to... this now okay cgc prices are going up effective april 28th so you have to have submissions in submissions online by the 28th to get the current pricing everything's going to go up like 20 25 percent is what it what it looks Damn. like so it's a big it's a big chunk on the more expensive tiers modern tiers it's just yeah. an extra four bucks well, you know, not not a big deal. Um, so I'm I'm sending these off now. Are those all modern or are those? No, this is going to be a good mix of modern, okay, Silver Age. Um, as I said before, the most expensive book I've ever sent off is contained within here, and also two or three of the least expensive books I've ever sent oh, off wow. are contained <laughs> okay. within here as well. Okay, well, it sounds like we have. So we're gonna yeah, we're gonna yeah, twenty go books. We're it. gonna go right through this. Actually, one of the books that I'm gonna send off is currently <clears throat> in the press, so it is not here. Cool. Um, I'll just go ahead and tell you it's Tales of Suspense number 94. It is the first appearance of MODOK with the MODOK show coming up. About a, about a mid-grade 5.5 five or so. So we'll see how that goes. How come nobody's talking about MODOK? I don't know. but on uh, all the lists of shows and stuff coming up, MODOK yeah. is not on there at all. Apparently, there's been a trailer or two released recently that I have not seen. Oh, okay. Anywho. Yes. Let's just go ahead and get started. There's a, there's a couple of repeat offenders on here, so we should move pretty quick. Okay. First one being X-Men Annual number 14 and casey you know you know what this is this is the very 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 first appearance of gambit is it yes okay we've talked about this before he's mentioned he's shown in, in several pages dozens of panels okay. referred to by name has dialogue it's his first freaking appearance Oh, this isn't his actual first appearance. They call this it is, a cameo. This is what they call a cameo. I was wondering because I've definitely seen the first appearance of Gambit and it didn't look like this. Yeah, well, you're going to see another one. Maybe. In just a few minutes. Anyway. Okay. Uh, so This is every bit of a nine. Yeah. So no, it's not. This is an eight five. I think If you get this press, it'll be a nine. I think it's an eight five-ish. Um, I'm with you. I put nine two because I'm, I'm trying to project post-pressing. Post-pressing. Getting sure. pressed. Yeah. I'll put you down for a nine. How about that? Okay, yeah, I mean the middle. All right, moving right along. We've got X Men 244. This has been a hot book lately. I bought this one for $20. 20 bucks? Like a month and a half ago. This is the first appearance of Jubilee. Really? Fans of the animated show. Interesting. Well, no one respect that. Oh, absolutely. Again, yeah. My childhood goes right all the way back to Jubilee. X Men books are super hot right now. Any first appearance you can get, this get is quite it. A few crease. This is a very long crease down the. Yep. So I'm I'm hoping for some I'm hoping for some press magic on on both of these. Actually, let's go ahead and do this. I've got two of these. Oh, okay. <laughs> Same thing. One's in a little bit. This one's in a little bit better shape. Uh, a little bit less. But I'm again I'm looking at all the defects and I think, for the most part, they're pressable. Okay. Um. So if they do a decent job and it's, this is kind of my experiment. I've never gotten any pressed books back from CGC. I've got a bunch again, coming back to me now. Yes, but you I, have. I haven't seen any pressed books back from CGC. The ones oh, I've got back. Oh, they press it. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So well, again, I, I would have to say that this after if if everything gets pressed out out of it, this is a this is a nine every day, a nine something every day, and this is two. Yeah. So I'm just I'm putting nine two for just about everything. Yeah, that's cool. Um, just to see what happens if I get a nine four, I wouldn't be surprised. If I got an eight five, it's CGC. I wouldn't be surprised. Sticking with modern books, sticking with X Men, we've got this. I love that. This beautiful, <laughs> this beautiful beast right here. I love it. So this is one of my flip books. We'll talk about that in a later video. But again, I think most of the defects look to be little creases, non-color breaking on the spine. So if they can press that spine smooth. There's a couple color breaking dang dings on the spine. Yep. But, I mean, shit, everything else. I'm just hoping for, I've got 9-2 on my end for all of you. I'm just... Did you get all these recently? Because I don't remember yes. you. Okay. Right, every these. one of these books so far, the, the four that we've seen, I've bought in the last month. Good lord. Five, six weeks or so. Or this is as well as this one here. So what do you say on that one? You're going to press it out into a what? Nine four. Ooh, I like it. I hope so. I'll go ahead and do both of these at once as well. Because, okay. again, Wolverine in full effect. So this is Wolverine's first regular series, issue number one. Again, I think these can be pressed into some pretty... Pretty little animals. That black cover's a little tough at times to, to get something, but I don't see any color breaks. I feel like the black cover a lot of the times is easier to see some dings. Easier to see. I don't I don't see. I don't see any color breaks. So right. No man, I think these are <clears throat> I mean these are these are upward nines of like every day if if you get these uh there's like a few dings on the spine each. I mean, yeah. like 9-2, sure. I'll put a bunch of 9-2s down. Doesn't really matter. Again, these these two are hot. These have gone. I bought these both for, I think, $40, $45 each. Cool. Um, they're in the $100 range already for all. Luckily, I bought it before it got too hot. Speaking of, we're moving, moving right along. One of the best Wolverine covers ever. This is the 1982 miniseries. The first ever time that you see Wolverine as the title of a comic book. God damn. So are... again, I think I think Hulk 181 and 180 giant size are already priced out of so many people's pocketbooks that both of these Wolverine number ones and the Hulk 340 with the badass Wolverine cover, those are going to end up you know feeling some re residual effects from Not too. the other ones being so bad. So... I'm going to say 9-2. So I'm going to... Again, these are all basically my flip books. Yeah. And again... I was going to say, you either got really lucky with the quality of these, or you... Uh, coming soon. You did some research. I mean, I looked at I looked at a lot of pictures. Not surprised. Yeah, we're going to talk about the flip project in another, another video. Here is yet another one, because I've got... We've got, between you and I, I think we've got three or four of these already, but we just spoke about it. X-Men 266. The first full appearance... Of Gambit, this is probably slightly less higher grade. Um, I'm, I'm still thinking like a nine. I never understand why the second nine appearance two. of Wolverine and Gambit are worth more than the first, but <laughs> well, that's, that's shit happens. I mean, damn! If you can get this uh, spine pressed out, this is a this is a nine, two, four. Yeah, I'm with it. I love doing the graders jobs by just looking at the covers. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, and you can't do that. There's a lot of, that goes into it. No, I understand that. But yeah, I think this, this is for funsies. I think this can be pressed into, yeah, 9294, hopefully. We'll see. Either way, I mean, I got that for like $109, I believe. That's really undervalued. Pretty for, good price. For how for much it. people love Gambit. All right, now we're getting into some interesting stuff. So <clears throat> we're going back in time. I believe this is 1972 or 73. This is a hero for hire. Numero Uno, the first appearance of one Luke Cage. In my opinion, one of the most undervalued books out there. It is for big damn thing. The age and significance a pretty high grade, especially if we can press out all this stuff. Yeah, that's the only thing that's on here. Well, no, we've got that little, little ding there. Yeah, so this is yeah, this isn't a nine. This is probably not a nine anything, but I. If these spine things can yeah. get taken out, I would say it's probably an 8.5. Yeah, somewhere around there. I was going to say 8. It looks like it has some canvassing, too. Did you press this? I did. But here's the interesting part on this one. I'm getting it pressed again, obviously. So right. hopefully the canvassing will come out. 
this is the comic that I bought on eBay that I believe has color touch, even though it wasn't oh. told it does. So okay. then, this is an experiment. We'll see. Interesting. I might get burnt up a little bit. Where I'm, do you think the color touch is? I wasn't able. There's a few spots. There's a little rough spot up here, as you can see, see. where a color break should have happened. Because it's, it's got some creasing. Oh, okay. But it's completely black, so it, it feels oh, like that I should see. have broken color. Yeah. And if you open it up, miraculously, there is a black ink spot exactly in that spot. And there's a couple other Damn. spots. So it, it's, it feels like color touch. The seller wasn't too cooperative on a refund and got a good deal on the book anyway. So I said, fuck it. We'll, we'll do what we're going to do. So anyway, we're supposed to sand bleep that out. Bonk it. <laughs> so I'm going to put restored here because it's probably going to, probably going to get a purple label. Yeah, probably. But we'll see. Um, and I'm just, as a grade, I'm going to say 8.0. You say as high as 8.5. We'll go with that. I don't know what they, I don't know how far it goes down. For, well, first of all, for the color touch, if that is color touch, and doesn't I rip, go it, up, thing, it, I rip it, at the bottom. It doesn't go down at all for the color touch. It just well, I mean, yeah, label. it just gets purple label, but I don't know what they do for the for the rip down. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's just only... That's like, if that's the only thing wrong with it, I have yeah. no idea what they do. I don't we'll know. See. We'll see. Moving right along, Astonishing Tales numero 25. Again, this is from the mid to early 70s. This is the first appearance of Deathlock, the Demolisher. Fantastic, famous George Perez cover. Again... Older book, pretty good shape. Bought that from Pops Comics. Yeah, shout out to Pops Comics. Here in Louisville, Kentucky, for the low, low price of, I think I bought it for 50 bucks even. I used my little gift card on it, so I got it for $25 net. Do you press this one too? I don't think I've pressed that one, okay. although I may have. Well, it looks like there's some stuff in the Sometimes. upper right corner that I might press out, and if it does, then that... Yeah, well, then the, up here is some stuff too, I believe, as well. I meant the left corner. Yeah. That's, that's what I meant. Presses out. Uh, same thing. I'm looking at eight five ish. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So I'm hoping for an eight five because, I, like I said, I don't have a lot of money into it, and at an eight five, it's worth a big bunch of money. And this is just one of those books where there are there are characters that have some substance, and you just at this point have to assume everybody's going to show up in the MCU, and when they do, that one's going to blow up. So I'm going to hang on to that one. That might be my baby for a while. Here's one that I. Was going to send off in the last one, and I just decided not to because it didn't hit the right tier. Everything was in the modern tier on the last yeah, one, and yeah. this one didn't hit it by like a few months. So I took it out. So I'm going to go ahead and do it again, especially now that we are in Shang-Chi mode. This is not a Shang-Chi comic, but it is Kung Fu based. So the Kung Fu MCU world is about to open up. This is Marvel Premiere number 15, the first appearance of Iron Fist. So this is the one, not a high grade. It's got some splatter of something on yeah, it. Yeah, is that on the book? Yep. Oh, that's gross. So I got this for like 40 bucks a couple, maybe two, two and a half years ago. Can you get this cleaned? So, well, I mean, they clean and press it. The press is also a clean. So hoping some of it comes off. Um, like I'm, I'm guessing it's probably, I'm, I'm going to put five, five on it. Yeah. Um, somewhere around there. If it came back at a, at a four or five, cause it's missing a little triangle piece there and it's got the splatter. If it doesn't come off, then. I mean, the splatter, if like if you look at it from right here, it doesn't you can't even see it. Yeah, well so they don't they don't grade at arm's length, unfortunately. No, but if the if it wasn't able to be removed, yeah. and I'm sure you could so no. you could probably probably find some solace in it. It's gonna get a mid grade, but it's gonna be an extremely displayable, bright, beautiful mid grade yeah. Oh, yeah. when it comes back. Yeah. So what do you think on that one? I was gonna say the same thing. Five five. All right. Now we're getting into some silver age shit. Now it's gonna get interesting. Another hot book, another spec book. He's coming. The Black Knight is coming in the Eternals movie. And of course, played by the Who, Jon Snow. Yes. That's the Black Knight? This is the Black Knight. That person right on the cover is the Black Knight? This is the Black Knight. Why is nothing about him black? I don't know. His helmet's kind of black. His sword is kind of black. Shadow's black. Yeah. So... Silver Age goodness here from, I don't know, 64, 65-ish. Um, pretty good shape. Really? It's got some got some things we can press out. but I didn't know the Black Knight was that old. Yeah, I mean, it's Avengers 48, 12 cents. So, yeah, maybe even like 67, 68, now that I think about it. I think the Avengers started until 64, if I'm correct. But again, hot book. 
Jon Snow, he's common, Dane Whitman. Um, really nice looking book for such an old one. Absolutely. So I'm I'm hoping I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hoping for a six zero on it. I don't know about six zero, Holmes. I'm getting. I'm gonna I'm gonna break character and I'm gonna get a little optimistic on this one. What? It's gonna get a little bit optimistic. I didn't say, know we were we were improving. I say six but... zero. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, whoa, yeah, our improv is so good. We didn't know we were doing it. You're playing a different character. Yeah, I didn't know. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about. Like I just I don't I don't know what. They yeah, do. that one. There's a crease on there that's a little it's a little tough. It's a big old thick crease and it yeah. looks like somebody got really mad at it with a razor blade. Like yeah, right over here at the staple. But um. Otherwise, I, know, I would say yeah. Other, pretty, otherwise, it's pretty pretty nice. I would say it, five five. Yeah, if it's like if it, could, if it comes back a five, not surprised and not disappointed. I'm gonna be optimistic for once. This I'm, might be my last. No. All right, moving right along. We're going back to modern. A brief venture back into modern. One of my favorite covers. Yeah, dude. ASM two thirty eight, the first hob hobgoblin. Um, may or may not show up in Spider-Man 3, along with essentially 80% of everybody every character. else that's been there already is coming back, apparently. Yeah. Every I'm okay with Spider-Man character, past, present, or future, is going to be in this, maybe. I'm fine with it, except for Electro. And every Spider-Man. Every actor. Uh, I'm sure, like, the, whoever wrote the score is probably coming back in some alternate version. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. And who knows what's actually going to happen. But... Did you press this one? Um, this is the one, this, again, has the famous tattoos in it. This is the one I pressed uh, last year when I first got my press and forgot a, the tattoo, and it just pressed the entire tattoo through the whole thing, and you could see a square. Right. Yeah. So I actually pressed this one two or three times trying to get that square out of it. I can't see a square. I so, no, I successfully did that, but you can see some canvassing because it, got, it got pressed at least three times yes it's definitely um, canvassed. so Which it is i don't i think i kind of like actually i don't mind it at all you can't see it unless you're just really looking at it but either way it's getting pressed again right but this is i've got it as an 85 once everything's pressed out i i think that's probably about as high as it like i could see it get an eight i could see it getting a nine uh because it does have like the, i think the bottom left corner's got a little chip out of it yeah but again it's one of my favorite and i'm and I bought the custom label. There is a Hobgoblin. Oh, nice custom label yeah. with essentially this. Oh, that's cool picture. So that's awesome. This one is. Yeah, I know. I think I'm mine, gonna say mine. I would say an A5 on that one. What did you say? I said A5. Oh, okay. I said it. if it gets an eight, I wouldn't be surprised. All right, so let's do this. One of my other spec books, especially that we've watched the Falcon and Winter Soldier now, mm -hmm. because when Batroc gave those weapons to the Flag Smashers, and they were rolling those things around, and then Sharon Carter had the thing that she put on the guy in the van and blew up. Spoiler alert. Um, yeah, good lord. <laughs> good lord. I mean, listen, this isn't going to... Whatever. Um, Watch the show. So, like, she murders this dude in the van, and there's this green smoke, and there's this green mist, and this green light coming out of everything. Mm -hmm. I feel like that is the precursor to what is going to be Oscorp tech and become like oh yeah the things bombs. that definitely look like pumpkin bombs it feels if like if they were that. orange they'd definitely be pumpkin bombs in yeah. the end to you like is sharon the power broker is she not is she she never said yes she was accused of being the power broker by carly she didn't acknowledge it and then batrock came in and says you're the power broker she didn't acknowledge it she just shot the dude in the face so when carly asked how much power does the power you know like she was like more than you she's got more power than you but didn't say it was her so anyway doesn't matter. I think she's working for Norman Osborn. Amazing Spider-Man number 37 is the first appearance of Norman Osborn. Really? Yes. I can't believe the Green Goblin was such a... Uh, well, actually, no. When was the Green Goblin's first appearance? The Green Goblin's first appearance was in 14. 14. Okay. And there's a panel or two where Spider-Man is fighting the Green Goblin for the very, very first time back in 1964, right? And they're doing this thing, and he was like, I think I think Green Goblin, you're behind this stuff, and Green Goblin's like Spider Man. You don't know the half of it. <laughs> he was, he was right. Literally half, because this is twenty three issues later, Norman Osborn's first appearance, which of course two issues after that in thirty nine, you finally find out that Norman Osborn is the Green Goblin. Right. So here it is. This is one copy I've got of this. Yeah, it's this a little sun faded, sun bleached. A little sun say. faded. Um. I'm going to go ahead and write a note 
sun faded copy. I don't know. Everything else otherwise looks pretty decent. Um, and, you know, it's 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 Silver Age book, so it's 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 a mid grade. I'm gonna put four or five on it because of the the bleaching of it. I was gonna sun say, fading. Uh, yeah. I mean, like the thing is that like it looks really good other than the fading. Yeah. We've had another issue with that. Yeah, what we was had that? a Punisher? Major, yeah, we had the first Punisher that yeah. we have yeah. that's fading, and I don't think it got dinged too bad. It's still got a 6.5. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. I need to look I think it. the most it was going to get was a 7.5, so it may have got a point or a half point ding. Did you press this? Uh, Probably, but they're getting pressed again. Everything's getting pre-pressed again, so. Yeah, I know. I just, I'm, I'm asking because I don't know what was there post your pressing. Oh, yeah. So I don't know what can be fixed and what can't be. Uh. Yeah, if this gets pressed, I think it's probably about a... Ugh. It's... Five. Yeah, I can see it getting five. And I'll be completely happy with this, because I bought I bought these two, and I'll go ahead and throw this one up here so you can take a look at it. This is the nicer one. It needs a little bit more of a press. It's a little wavy, um, but this, the colors on it are so much more vibrant. Um, other than that, it's got a couple things on there, but I think this is a prettier looking power. Oh, this is what it's supposed to look like. Yeah. <laughs> much prettier looking. Much colorful. So I, th I think... Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to sell this one because I What's bought one? both of these for less than $50 each raw. Um, They're going to hit a few hundred bucks uh, when Norman Osborne starts showing his face. Yeah. So this is going to be the one I'll probably flip. I'll keep the pretty one for myself. Is Harry Osborne in the MCU movies yet? Nope. Okay. Nor is Gwen Stacy. Don't know if they're ever going to be. So I'm on this one. I've just got a five-five. I was gonna say about a five-five. Yeah. So we'll see what happens there. Yeah, that's has its own issues, but I mean, right. colors are infinitely better. Though. We got some good ones coming up. Last few. Last few, and this is one that I bought at the tail end of Wandavision because I realized it wasn't gonna happen. But this character is probably gonna show up, and that is Wonder Man. This is Avengers number nine, right? Nine. First appearance of Wonder Man. It's in low to mid grade. I got it for uh, basically a song. Uh, yeah. Got a good deal on it. And it's like a $95 book or whatever, which is really, really good for a single digit Avengers book. First appearance and death of Wonder Man, who I think I've told you before, but I'll remind you really quickly that Wonder Man's brain waves were what in the comics were what used to create visions brain patterns oh really so he's referred to a lot of times as the brother of vision okay so okay, that'd be cool i think he's gonna make an appearance you know vision flew off yeah we got white vision what the hell's going on with white vision oh what's going on who knows who i don't knows? know people uh, think people think he's gonna show up in the armor war show we'll see yeah we'll see. so anyway i don't know man i think this is parents. probably uh or I'm saying three, five even, but four. Yeah, absolutely. I can see it getting a four. Yeah. I can see it getting as high as a four or five if I, you know, on a good day. But There's a lot of spine damage on this one. A lot. Yep. And on the bottom. Yep, but it's, again, nice looking book for what I paid for it especially, so we'll see what happens there. And now it gets really interesting. Ooh. Now it gets really interesting. <laughs> All right. Okay. You're going to enjoy the last three. Yeah, it's, I'm already enjoying this one. Comic Familia. So this is Amazing Spider-Man number 13. The first appearance of Mysterio. Yeah. And it is a looker. It's hard to tell from this far away, but... Yeah, dude. We're going to press Damn. this into something, and it's going to be about Ooh. one of the prettiest, cleanest looking Damn. Amazing Spider-Man number 13 that you've ever seen. It's, it's going to be the prettiest one you've ever seen. It is. It's already the prettiest one I've ever seen. God, but this is nice. It's got some pressing waviness around. Yeah, the spine. there's a couple little spine things that could be pressed out, but I so, mean, it doesn't break color at all. <laughs> Damn, dude. No, it doesn't. I hear you. There's a reason you recall this. I do. Yes. Is this color touch? This is the one that has some color touch. Damn it. <laughs> so I got this one for I Where? believe. Yeah, I mean, I can't. I'm not good at recognizing color touch. It's easy to tell if they did it with a damn sharpie or something. Yeah, I mean, if it was done, it was done well. Uh, but it was sold as restored, as having a little color touch. So I bought God it, damn it, knowing that. 
this is something that I wanted to do a separate project on. So we'll, we will dive into this when it comes back and talk about it specifically because there is always the debate. Is it worth it to have the restoration removed? Yeah, you were talking to me about this yeah. a couple of days ago. I'm very interested to see what kind of data you come up with. If this comes back, which it very well could, since they give you just a little leeway on these older older books. So yeah. if, if it comes back and presses into like an 8 or an 8.5, I don't think it's going to be worth it. I'll just keep it, and I'll just have a purple label 8.5, and, and I don't even, I won't lose any sleep over it. I'll still look at it in, in Marvel and its glory. If it comes back a little it. lower, then you really start to think about, okay, well, what is this? What is this worth if it just drops a grade point or a point and a half, but gets the blue label? Right. We'll mess with that later. But anyway, pretty book. Pretty. Yes, very pretty. We'll see there. I'm saying that you this... You debated me. I'm but saying this is going to press into a... Oh, yeah. I didn't even say you gave me the bad news. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go I was going to say, say like an eight. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna say seven, five... But you know, it wouldn't shock me if it got an eight, which is awesome. Every time. All right, two more books. This one here is ours. Yes, it is. Tomb of Dracula, number ten, the first appearance of Blade. Blade's coming. Yeah, he is. So we grab that up. Um, yeah, mid to mid to high grade. I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you, I think it's six five. Yeah, sure. Um. It could be five five. It could be seven five. I don't use. I've seen so much inconsistency with CGC. It's it's difficult. So I flipped through it all. Nothing crazy going on the inside. Back cover looks nice. Um, the only thing that worries me is just being. Well, I mean the the spine itself is is a little rough. So yeah, and but but you can tell that. Yeah. So again, they're gonna we're gonna press it out. We'll see what what they can get some of those things out. Uh, but I'm just gonna say I'm saying six five. Yeah, I concur. You say six five. We'll see what happens because this is one of our investment books. There's two of these little dot things. Yeah. Shit. Well, they'll. I mean, beep. Yeah, those those should press out. So we'll see. Um, I think we're gonna be okay on it any either way. Yeah, I think so. And last but absolutely, oh, absolutely not least, the most, the 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 foreshadowed, the aforementioned, most expensive book I've ever sent. Meaning it's. Raw value is worth more than anything I've ever willingly given away to put into a, a calculation. I've gotten some back that, because of the grade, are worth more than this. But we talked about it before. Same reason. Amazing Spider-Man, number 14, the first appearance ever of the Green Goblin. And it's not a bad-looking book. So... I'm going to do a separate video. I'm going to do a separate video. You're going to pretend like you're going to do a separate video. I'm going to do video. a separate video on this book in particular because there is a... I bought this for a lot of money. I'll go ahead and tell you. I spent exactly $2,000 on this book. The most I've personally ever paid for a comic book. Um, but I'm going to do a video showing you how to make your comics pay for your comics. And I'm going to dive into this one specifically. I mean, you're going to see the journey of me flipping comics, a lot of which you've seen here. I'm going to, to the penny, I'm going, to tell, I'm going to tell you what I bought it for, how much it's, it cost me to send off any graded, shipping, everything, eBay fees. We're going to do the rundown. We're going to do the tally. And I'm going to flip, 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 flip until I make my twenty, about $2,200 back after grading um, and taxes and all that stuff. So. Interesting. We're gonna get down to the penny because, you know, it's it's not easy just to be a comic book collector these days with the, with the prices doing what they're doing and you, and you and you really want certain books that cost so much money, and you're like, how am I ever gonna get a two thousand dollar book or a five thousand dollar? How am I ever gonna have the first appearance of Thor or whatever? Well, there's a way to do it. Yeah, man. Yeah, you can't. There's a, a lot of times it. you can't go. Oh, I don't. I'd have no fucking idea of how to grade this. This has writing. This has someone's name on yeah. it. It's. I'm really bad at grading the. Well, I'm the telling you. Ones. I'm telling you. I'm putting it as a three. Sure. <laughs> um, it looks. It looks like a three five. It's very pretty. Yeah. But, but the spine is all kinds of messed up, and someone wrote their fucking name on the bottom. Yeah, I mean, their beeping name on the bottom. It's vibrant and doesn't have a lot of color breaking creases, but yeah, the spine is a mess. Yeah. They wrote their name on it. They rewrote their name on the first page. 
Oh, once, come on. And these man. things aren't big deals for, you know, once you get down to the lower grades, it's. I, as not a collector, I kind of like that stuff. Yeah. But, you know. But <clears throat> overall, this probably looks to be in the four range. Ish. The spine is split for about a third of the book. Ooh. It is not detached, or it's not as it is not attached at the bottom staple, the cover. It is not. It is hanging on, but this is going to be a non-attached cover. And really? So that drops it around to the two, five, to three range. I'm hoping because it it otherwise looks like probably a four, maybe even a four or five from this far. I didn't think they counted. I didn't know that they didn't count that as an attached cover, if the bottom staple isn't on. It can, at certain grade levels, at a three, it can be detached at one staple. Oh, okay. So I, I read the rules again on Overstreet right. before I bought this because I knew it was detached at this staple. And that's probably why I didn't get any other bids. This is a little bit of a risk for me. It's quite a bit of a risk, um, I would say. However, I feel really good about it. I mean, what's a three worth if you get a three? I mean, a three, there's... There's not many of them that come up, so it's really hard to say. But oh, I, I oh. bought it for about market price. Um, I'm going to put you down as a three as well, because you agree with me. Um, not that it matters. So, current value, I'm not so concerned about. This is one of these things that I think is going to double whenever he starts popping up. So, yeah. I Easy. don't really care so much about it. No. Because, the, actually, the threes, three fives, they've been going the fifteen, sixteen, seventeen hundred dollar range. They've You see little spikes, like this one. It's not a graded copy, so it won't hit the GPA website because it's not CGC graded. But these blips happen. So this is probably over about market price. I probably bought it for like a 4.0, and it might get a 3. Damn. But the supply is so, so thin right now, and I wanted to get it now. So I'm, I'm taking a risk on it. Hmm. We'll see. Sometimes I do that. Yeah, you do. Sometimes I don't do that, and then I regret that I didn't. Very Most of the afterwards. time you do that, yeah. So I said, "Hey, do that." A lot. I said, "Forget it. I've always, I've always wanted it. I've been collecting comics for thirty plus years. I've never had it. This was a uh, an, aff an affordable copy, and it's going to be a perfect segue into my flip project that shows you, you, and you how to make these comics here pay for this comic here." Yeah, I mean everything's affordable if you, um, yeah. if you do it that way. Yes, but not everybody knows certain secrets and tips and i'm going to Absolutely. show that in the video everyone needs help doing it yeah if they're going to do it if you love comics and you like collecting comics and sometimes you don't have two thousand dollars fucking sitting around for <laughs> for grails like that i know i don't there are some comics that i would like to have that cost a lot of money maybe i can get around to doing that if i can get yep. comics that i want for free i'm all about it this is going to be for the first installation in one of these flip projects that I do, and I wanted to start off slow and low, two grand. It's pretty achievable. Yeah, you say grail, yeah. and it is a grail to you because, I mean, Absolutely. the Green Goblin's like, well, the Green, I mean, it would be a grail to me. The Green Goblin's like Green my, Goblin. favorite, my favorite villain in comic books. Yeah. Other than the Joker. Right. Well, I'll, I'll never have the first appearance of the Joker. No, you won't. <laughs> no, likely. I mean, you could. Most likely. Everything would have to go right from now on, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my life would have to take a turn. Oh, sharp left one, yeah. Yeah, almost. That's Batman number one, by the way. Is it Batman number one? He was the first villain? Damn. Yeah, you're not you. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Batman number one. Sorry, buddy. As yeah, that one's That's out. also the first appearance of the Catwoman. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's enough. Okay, yeah. That's uh, just enough number four. Complete. Number four, before we, you know, do part two to uh, two, part two, or part two yeah. to three. Who knows? For the CBCS. So... Yeah, you've seen this. You've seen this mother for, mother effer. Sin comics, off to CGC more than you've ever seen anyone else in comic books off to CGC. Yeah, it's true. I've also got four comics to CBCS, so I've got forty eight books now. Yeah, worth about ten to <clears throat> grand, easy. Makes me nervous. It should. Anyway, um, yeah. So I, <laughs> I guess let us know what you guys think about the uh, the books that he's sending off this time. Uh. I, I would be I'd be hard pressed to give my uh my first appearance in the Green Goblin to the post office, <laughs> but but you do you. I will fully insure it. Fair enough. Anyway, yep. Leave us a comment down below explaining why he is making a bad or a good decision. I think you're making pretty good decisions. I make good decisions sometimes. Ninety five percent of the time. Let us know. Sometimes I already said that. Give the video a like if you liked it. 
and uh, subscribe for content like this all the time because he won't stop sending stuff to CGC. I can't. He won't do it. We'll see you on the next one.